Hello guys, welcome to the second sub part of dependency injection in ASP.NET Core Web API tutorials. In this video, we are going to see the best way to resolve dependency injection. The ways to do it is to first work with the assembly. The next will be listing the interfaces and class types and finally connecting both the lists. So let's get started. Let's jump into the code right now and see what is the problem statement first. The code for this video is going to be present in this particular branch. The link for the same will be present in the description box. So we are here right now in the solution and now if you see this number of files added is 99. As discussed in the last video, we have actually created multiple test services if you can see here starting from A to Z and we also have the same interfaces as well starting from test A to test Z. The same is there in the repositories layer. If you see here, we have multiple interfaces here from A to Z and A to Z repository classes as well in the repository file. So now let's actually check the startup class. As you can see here, if there was only a single file, it was good to do it this way. But if there are multiple files, we have to manually write all these lines here for all the services as well as the repositories. If you count the number of lines here, you will actually notice it's around 50 lines. But we obviously don't want to write this much, right? Let's start coding now and resolve this 50 lines of code into 10, 10 lines, right? So, okay, so I'll start from here. The first thing to do is actually list down all these names of these different layers. Let's create the array of strings and I'll name it assembly names. All right, so this is how the assembly name array looks like. Okay, now there is something called assembly, which is there for the entire solution. We can actually use the assemblies load function to get all the data related to every layer, right? So let us see how we can do that. I'm going to say where available types, okay? And I'm going to say assembly names dot select. Let's do a select right now. We are going to see what exactly to do later. So assembly name for every assembly name, we are going to say assembly. If you notice assembly, it is under the namespace system dot reflection and there is a method called load and inside that you just provide the assembly name all right and we are going to say get types so for this particular name it is going to get all the types okay let's close the bracket and say to list and now if you notice for every assembly name we have a list of system dot type array let's actually combine it how to do it we can do it like this so instead of select we are going to use select many and what this is going to do is merge all the system type arrays into the list just like this all right let's go to the next step we are going to find out all the interfaces and the classes for every layer right so let's write test we are going to figure out all the interfaces uh, name it available types dot where available type equals available type dot is interface so for every type we will have multiple properties like is interface is class is abstract and using the is interface property for this type is going to let us know all the interface types let's say dot to list all right we have all the interfaces now let's get the class types as well we are going to use the same query Let's quickly write it. All right. And now the conditions to become a proper class are as follows. So we'll, we are going to find a property called is class. We are going to also check if this available type is an abstract class or not. So if not abstract and is a class, we are going to consider this as a proper class. Let's make a tool list and okay. So that is how we figured out all the list of interfaces and class types. Let's now go forward and connect the interface and the class type together. Okay. Let's use link use for it. So we are going to say interface types dot for it. We are going to name it interface type. All right. Let's open up a function. Let's find out the matching class type. So we are going to name it so we are going to name it matching class type is equals to we are going to say class types dot let's use first or default all right let's name it class type 
let's say class type and it will have a property called name let's match it with the similar interface name so we have the variable called interface type let's use the name here as well and now since the interfaces have the first letter as i let's omit that and take the value for this interface type from the second alphabet right so if this condition is true we have a successful matching class type now let's quickly add one more condition and eventually we're going to add the interface and the class type let's add the condition like this if now we have the assembly names mentioned here right so let's reuse this variable assembly names let's use the option contains and inside let's use this matching class type name so if the matching class type there is a property called base type which basically is the layer name of that particular class so inside that we will have the name of the base type and we are checking here for this particular class type let's let's take an example so if we consider this particular file TST service it is under this application services layer and, and now if we are checking assembly names dot contains which is particularly this row so this this particular entry here matches with the layer of this particular class so if there is a successful match we are going to say services dot add scope just as we wrote here and inside we are going to use the interface type first and then the matching class type that is it and if there is no match in that case let's just add add transient for the class we are going to use the same way interface type and use the matching class type here but there is one more thing here there can be a chance where the matching class type will be null for example if we have an interface called itest service but we don't have this particular file in this layer in that case it will throw an exception so for that we can add one more check matching that class type not equals null only if this is true it should go inside here it will then check the first condition if this matches we are going to use scope lifetime for this particular matching class type else we are going to use transient for other for the matching class type but if there is no matching class type there will be no addition for the class type right that is pretty much it that actually resolves all this 50 lines of code into just this many lines but there is one more thing let us do it the best way that let, let us use best practices for this particular method since it only adds interfaces and matching class types we should actually move this particular code into a separate file and from here we should refer that class right so let's use the common layer here we are going to add a folder called utilities inside that let's create a class and name it service lifetime extensions all right let's make this class a public one and also add the static method here all right quickly add one more static function this should return back i service collection um the s is wrong so yeah this is going to be the return type for this function let's install this package and we have the service collection here let's name this method register class on matching names because that is what we are going to do here the first parameter received for this function will be i service collection and since it's a static method we can use this to not expect the services parameter here expect an array of string here let's name it assembly names open up the bracket and then cut this code actually this part starting from here till here cut this code paste it here let's add the using statement and after adding all these classes in into the services let's return back the services here all right and add the and go back here say services dot register class on matching names right and just pass all this assembly names here right let's add the using statement 
and that is it that's how you write just a simple piece of code and do everything so now we don't need all these lines here in fact we don't even need this particular part as well let's start testing all right let's run the solution Let's put a breakpoint here. All right. So for the interface type, I imply service. We have a matching class type called imply service. Now let's go inside this and check if this particular condition is true. So assembly name does find the application services namespace, and since the condition is true, it goes inside and adds the scope lifetime. This keeps on happening for other classes as well and this goes on. I'm going to remove this now and going to release the cursor. And if you see here, the API solution has successfully ran. All right, let's quickly test one endpoint. We have the get endpoint handy. Let's quickly click on send and you should be able to see the output here. Well, yeah, that is it. We have successfully got the output back. That's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to create databases and tables so that we can eventually connect this API solution to a database. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to support us, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.